Katie Black Boston coming to you with another video. This is the prediction of uh, Earl Spence and uh, Kel Brook. You know, I might be a little bit long-winded in this video. I'm going to try to make it short as possible, though. Um, and the reason why, because this is a phenomenal fight, man. Not only do I believe it's going to be a remarkable and phenomenal <clears throat> and awesome fight, I truly believe this might be one of the best fights of 2017. I think it's going to have a lot of replay value. You know, um, both of these guys came in tremendous shape, man. You know, I know uh, a lot of a lot was said about Kell Brook making weight because he had to come down from uh, 160 when he uh, fought Golovkin in his last bout, and a lot of a lot of people were saying that you know he blew up to you know the 170s, even 180s, in uh, in the uh, off season. <laughs> But one thing about these welterweights, man, whether it's uh, Kell Brook, Earl Spence, Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, all of these guys are big. All these guys are big welterweights, man. It's nothing for these guys to be 20 to 25, 30 pounds uh, over the welterweight limit in the offseason. I'm just being totally honest, man. All these guys are just big. You can just tell, man. You can look when you're talking to them in the offseason. How big their faces are. You know, they just look more, you know, they just look more, uh, they just look more bigger, man. You know what I mean? And you can even see, even when they do the unofficial weigh-ins, if they do choose to do that, you already know they're already going to be 15 to 20 pounds over the weight limit anyway. So, you know, heads up, man. Both of these guys came in at 146. That's what I like to see. When you are truly or in doubt, come, come, go a pound. Or if you could, go a pound, pound and a half, maybe two pounds under the limit to make sure that you made the weight. I'd rather, I'd rather you be scrawny up there to make the weight for sure than, than, than to be maybe a half pound, a pound over. And then you got to really, you know, kill yourself to really make the damn weight at that point. So both of these guys came in 146, man. Did, did y'all see how, I mean, these dudes was in shape, man. I'm talking about dude. This is, listen right here, man. Every fighter taking note outside the uh, heavyweight division because they don't really got to make weight. Any uh, division they got to make weight, man, uh, contracted weight, this is what you, this is right, this is what you do, man. You cannot say neither guy wasn't in shape, dude. These dudes was muscular. Uh, man, they physique was, they, they ready, dude. Tomorrow, I mean, dude, that right there, if nothing else insured me, I thought that stir down yesterday insured me. But them at the weigh-in, that truly ensured that I know tomorrow is going to be fireworks, man. I'm truly am excited about this fight, man. I'm excited because Earl Spence finally get his opportunity to fight for a title. I'm also excited because Carol Brook, he did not have to go come down and to defend his title. He easily could have stayed at 154 after losing to Golovkin and, um, you know, fought some easy fights there in England or whatever the case may be and probably even picked up a title, who knows, and he could have vacated it, man. But the true champion that he is, he said, you know what? I don't want nobody to think that I'm ducking. I don't want nobody to think I'm scared. I don't want nobody to think I'm a coward. I'm going to do what a man truly does in a championship of boxing, and I'm going to defend my title. I want it, and if I have to lose it, um, it's going to be because somebody beat me for it. It's not because I lost it at the scales or I lost it because I didn't want to uh, defend it. And that's what's up, man. And Earl Spence, like a true champion, a true ch sorry, he's not a champion yet, but a true challenger. You know, he fought the people that was placed in front of him. And he did everything he had to do in order to be in this position right now. So this is going to be a good fight, man. Uh, it was only two fights as of right now that I've seen, um, you know, presented that I was kind of topsy-turvy about. The first fight was, uh, you know, Joshua and Klitschko. And the second one fight is, you know, Spence and... Uh, and um, Brooke, you know, and the reason why with Klitschko and Joshua was because even though I picked Joshua to win, he did win in dramatic fashion, and truly that was dramatic. Um, because all the you know Klitschko's a veteran, you know, all the fights, sixty plus fights Klitschko had, he's a veteran, held, held those belts down, whether we want to call him boring or not. Um, he held those belts down. 
for close to 10 years, man. And um, you can't do that without being some form, uh, having some form of talent, you know. So that's the reason why. And I was like, man, Josh only had 18 fights. You know, even though he's younger, he's stronger, it's going to be a hell of a, it could be a hell of a fight. And, and, it, and it proved to be a hell of a fight, you know. And this fight right here, the reason why I'm topsy turvy with Brookie Spence because it's kind of, um, to this point, you know, um, and this is the truth, uh, Earl Spence, the best fighter that's on his resume is like uh, is a Chris Igeri or maybe Leonard Bundle, whoever you want to, you know, whoever you want to call it. And those really are like C-list, might be minus type fighters if you want to even, you know, rate them that high. But definitely C, uh, C plus fighters, you know what I mean? But he did what he's supposed to do. He beat both of them. He stopped both of them. And that's what you do when you are uh, climbing up the uh, the ladder. And we, we know tomorrow will definitely be his hardest fight, man, uh, on paper. I say that because you never know when two men get in there. But we have two uh, stellar fighters going in there fighting. Normally, a knockout don't happen. Not saying it can't, but normally... Um, other than the heavyweight division, because those guys, 200 plus pounds, any punch can be a lights out. It really doesn't matter how good you are. But any the other division, basically, when it's like, you know, even if knockdowns happen, um, cuts, or, you know, whatever happens, nine times out of ten, a lot of times, those uh, matches go to distance, man. So I would not be um, surprised if tomorrow Spence and uh, Kale Brook. Go to distance, especially because Brooke, he don't want to lose in his hometown. You know he's gonna have up to thirty thousand people ran ranting and raving and and rooting for him. You know, so he don't want to let nobody down. And uh, he didn't go. Out, he didn't come all the way down to wait to defend his title just to lose it. And same with Earl Spence. He ain't come all the way uh, miles and miles, several you know, hundred miles and several hours away on a plane to not take that belt back to the United States. So with that, when you got two guys who both are saying they're not going to take a step back, who both are saying, you know, you can look in a, uh, like you said, look at it, that um, that stir down yesterday. Dude, that was one of the most intense stir downs I've ever seen in a boxing match. And I've seen some intense ones, but this one was real, man. They did not, even when they turned away, they still was looking at one another. And then Earl Spence came back, you know what I mean? Carol Brooke stood there, you know what I mean, looking like, dude. You know, they, they looked at each other for like three minutes almost, man. Dude, that's some, hey, that's some powerful shit right there, man. That, what that tells me that both of these guys are ready. And then you see them guys on the scale. I don't want to, you know, revisit what I just said, but you see those guys on the scales, man. Them dudes not joking, man. These guys are not playing. Man, both of these guys truly want this fight, man. The only one can have it. Unless a draw happened, and I don't want to see no draw. You know what I mean? I truly want to see the best man win. And, you know, um, Kara Brook, man, between the two, he's more loose on his feet. You know, he's more of a, um, you know, a mover. He's a better mover, if you ask me. Not saying that Earl Spence can't move, but um, Kara Brook is a better mover. You know, he, 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 he needs distance. You know, from a long range to throw his jab, as well as his overhand right. That's his bread and butter. You know what I mean? Even though he's calling it chocolate brownie now. <laughs> I don't know where the hell he got that from. But anyway, he playing on landing a lot on Earl Spence. And Earl Spence is the most technical guy in boxing. I've said this before. If you look at the word technical you know, boxing, you probably, as of today, you'll probably see Earl Spence uh, pitcher in our man because he's very, very technical. Everything he do goes off the jab, the southpaw jab, man. Um, he throw that left straight. Earl Spence is more of a mid-range to up-close boxer, and he's up-close because once he get done going to the head with the jabs and his left straights, he go right to the body throwing those left and right hooks to the body, man. His body attack is bar none. The best, you know, in my opinion, the best body attack in boxing right now, man. And he goes to the body and head. He do everything technical, every and everything he throws is with power. But it's not when he throw heels with power. 
It's not uh like he's lunging with it and everything comes natural. Like when you go in the gym and they teach you how to throw punches, that's how when you first start and that's how uh Earl Spence continue to throw his punches today. You know, everything is uh everything like from the tip of the toe all the way to the, the tip of the two knuckles, you know what I mean? It, it, it turning his uh his hips, his shoulders, everything is at a natural flow. I mean, it's, he's, he's just very, very technical, man. Um, although I believe the experience is on Kel Brook's side, fighting with um, Sean Porter and fighting with um, Janani Golovkin, even in a losing effort, he had some good, he had a good showing in that fight. I just truly believe, though, man, this is the Earl Spence night. Tomorrow will be Errol Spence night, man, and I truly believe that eye injury from Carol Brook um, might play a part. You know, I know they said they're ready. I know they said they sparred even without headgear to make sure they was ready, but I'm just going to go say, man, I think Errol Spence, um, if I was Errol Spence, I'd be, that's why I'd be targeting him, man. I'd be targeting him for that. You know, so that's what I would be doing to get the victory, man. So Errol Spence, you got to do one or two things, brother. Because a lot of people put so much stuff on you, put so much stock in you because of what you did in sparring more than you did in the ring fighting. And without a doubt, we know you're great at fighting. But you got more uh, you got more props for stopping Adrian Broner and giving Floyd Mayweather the black eye in sparring. You know, this is what you got your props for. And once Floyd Mayweather drops for you, a lot of people jumped on your bandwagon. I'm just being totally honest. And this is no hate on them. A lot of people jumped on your band on this bandwagon, and um, and ever since then, you know, it's just been an Earl Spence show. You know, I've never, you know, that's why they crowning you the king of the welterweights, although you don't even have a title now. So, in order to to fill those big ass shoes that everybody has placed upon you, you must go in there and either knock them out, or thoroughly outbox them so much that they can't have no choice but to give you the uh, victory. You got to do it in Dango. Julius in Dango, it's a perfect. You, you see what Tank Davis did last week. He got the knockout to ensure that he walked out with his title. You know what I mean? Even though that was his title, but he didn't want to leave it in England. So in order for you to bring that belt back to America, so you can be indeed the truth, as your moniker states, Earl the Truth Spence, you got to go in there and I'll box him like Dango did Ricky Burns to, to take that belt. Or you got to do what Ndongo did to Troy Arnowski and knock him the fuck out. Only two things, only two options you got, brother. We can't be no close fight because if it's a close seven rounds to five, Carol Brook is going to win. I'm going to tell you the truth. So that's what we need to do, man. So this is what I'm picking. I'm rolling with the, uh, the American, you know, uh, Earl Spence. I'm American and a brother, and he's the brother, so of course... I'm rolling with Earl Spence all the way, man. I want to see this guy because he has the opportunity to not only beat the, uh, beat uh, Carol Brook and get the title, but to unify when he once he win, man. And uh, one thing I am going to say quickly, say I, mean, I know I made a video about it. Both of them was kind of, you know, both of them want to fight Keith Thurman in, in the unification battle, and I'm good with that, you know. But sometimes in a, in you know. In, and a bit up to their fights, they was kind of alluding to fighting other fighters. I'm like, man, y'all guys haven't even fought each other yet, you know, so yeah, y'all should have been focused on each other. But the focus is right back where it needs to be at, man. And uh, I think it's going to be, regardless of what, it's going to be a phenomenal fight. I'm rolling with Earl Spence, man, you know, and uh, this is how it goes. And I'm K-Buddy Boxing signing out. Like, comment, subscribe.